Good morning, friends and fellow traders. Uh, this is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for June 27th, 2019. Hey, before we get started, guys, I am on demand. I am healing up here, feeling a little bit better, but I just want to warn you of the possibility of some coughing and sniffling as we move forward here. Um, I am starting to feel considerably better, and as you can probably hear, my voice is getting stronger. But I just want to warn you for that possibility, and I apologize ahead of time if it does occur. So this morning, we are looking at an interesting market. We had futures that were bullish and positive all night long, looking like we were going to push back up um, in the market. And then um, early this morning, we got a report from the Wall Street Journal suggesting that um, the Chinese president is going to present to President Trump at the G20 meeting a list of demands to um, resolve the trade situation. The list of the demands include um, the removal of Huawei from uh, the ban list and restoring them to be able to buy U.S. US technology. Also, also um, the removal of any attempt to um, improve the trade deficit with uh, China, asking them to buy more U.S. products. Um, I got to tell you guys, um, it, it seems unlikely that if, if this story is true, it seems un unlikely that that would occur. And as a matter of fact, it seems unlikely to me, if this story is true, um, that we get a resolution to this uh, trade war anytime soon. So futures quickly reversed and went negative really, really sharply um, on that news report. But then so far this morning, we have rebounded back up as if, uh, you know, futures are trying to ignore that this has even occurred uh, this morning. And we are looking at relatively flat open so far this morning. So let's take a look and see what we have going on here. Now, the diamonds, the Dow, may have a little bit more trouble than the other indexes today. And we're showing that right now in the futures. As I speak right now, Dow futures are now down 27, 28 points. And a large reason for that might be because of the news that Boeing released. Boeing was setting up a really nice entry yesterday. Boeing released a news that um, they have found another problem in their software that will delay the 737 and you can see uh, Boeing is looking to gap down this morning on that news so um, still more problems here for Boeing and obviously that will have some impact on the diamonds or the Dow today um, if we take a look at that diamonds let's take a look at where we are um, currently just a, a nice actually fairly comfortable sell-off um, nothing here that would be um, terribly bearish in any way, shape, or form, other than we are showing, you know, that possibility that we have failed to hold the new highs here on the diamonds. That certainly can turn bearish, particularly if we were to pull back, rally to a lower high, and then fail. That's where the real problem would uh, potentially begin. But so far, as long as we continue to hold above this 50-day moving average, notice our shorter-term moving averages are crossing back up to the 50, providing a layer of <coughs> uh, price support right in here. So any kind of a pullback, I think, that holds us um, above this area is perfectly acceptable um, and still maintains us as a bullish market so we'll have to watch that closely now if the news that we are talking about um, which would seem if if the chinese president delivers that to president trump i cannot imagine 
I would think the odds go from slim to creating a trade deal to none at the G20 meeting and um, and probably raising the odds of higher tariffs, maybe even a next week, a holiday week. So challenging, a challenging weekend ahead when it comes to uh, protecting yourself and your capital in the market. We know that as we move into this weekend, anything is possible. And then to add extra complication to next week, we, we, we stumble right into a shortened trading week with a 4th of July holiday. That could make for some very, very challenging trading. And, and I think in a way creates a situation where it's near to impossible particularly for a swing trader to hold on to any kind of edge in a trade makes me wonder whether or not we could, even though the, the market is trying to put on a bullish face this morning, a slightly bullish face this morning, considering the news, if we couldn't possibly experience some selling heading into this weekend just to avoid the risk. So consider that and be careful how you approach this. Plan carefully that risk as we head into this weekend. And just know that um, anything is possible. We could see a very bullish response after the G20 meeting. Perhaps they do come to an agreement. Um, I wouldn't want to rule out anything right now and the market soars on that news. We could also come out of this looking... Um, pretty darn ugly if um, that report is anywhere close to accurate and we know um, how our president tends to respond to ultimatums. So um, pretty pretty difficult as we move into this weekend and we could see uh, lots of fireworks created, not just from the 4th of July, but in market prices um, as we come out um, of this weekend. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY also pulling back and at this point doing okay, holding above its 50 day moving average and holding above this little price support right in through here. And I think this transfers right back through this area here. And you can probably pull this back and even go further back in this chart to find that price support um, in, in this area. So pretty good price support in this area. Notice our shorter term averages moving up through the 50 hopefully going to pr provide us a little price protection here as we head into this um, head into this difficult weekend. Um, let's keep in mind that any kind of hold in here and bounce could set up a bullish chart. So we'll want to pay attention to that. I think the only problem, the questionable problem will occur is if we fail or happen to drop on through. <clears throat> that 50 day moving average. I apologize guys. I'm having a little throat um, difficulties here trying to avoid coughing. So forgive me. But as you can see, if we drop through that 50 day moving average, we could see some problems here um, in the market. But right now that is, I don't think on, on uh, a threat at the very, at this moment. But we will want to pay attention to that level. Now let's talk about the Qs. The Q is a little bit different story here. The NASDAQ struggled a little bit more here than the diamonds in the spy. And you can see that the Qs never made it up to break out to that new high. So this technically right here has become a lower high print in the NASDAQ. And we know that the, the trade war kind of transitioned a bit into a tech war with um, the exclusion of Huawei and, and several other Chinese companies uh, that have come or followed. Um, and so we have some issues here in uh, the NASDAQ to consider. If we take a look at our 50-day moving average here, we're still relatively safe at this point, holding above that 50-day moving average. But it's gonna be really critical, I think, for it to hold above this area, if we were to slip below that 50 day moving average, this could get a little bit serious here in the NASDAQ. So we wanna watch that closely. A hold in here certainly gives us all kinds of reason to consider bullishness. Just that failure could be um, just the uh, opposite. So we'll wanna think about that one. And the NASDAQ here has just that 
little bit of hesitation because of that lower high that we created here um, in the queues to, to pay attention to. Last but not least, let's take a look at IWM. Now, IWM, you know, has just not, um, you know, been bashful about staying bearish. Um, nowhere near all-time highs, continuing to show bearishness, continuing to show weakness, uh, failing its 50-day moving average here once again, and its 200-day moving average, and slipping lower. So far, as of yesterday, it held on to this level of support in the chart. But if we see any additional selling and we drop back down through here, then we could probably experience new lows in IWM coming soon. So consider that. Now, of course, if we find the support in here and we hold, then we have that opportunity to run back up here and test this overall downtrend in the market. But let's watch that closely. IWM really hasn't been pretending um, and staying weak um, by and large um, all the way through this massive move in the market and could be you know that early warning um, of more trouble to come we'll have to watch wait and see don't want to predict anything but i certainly do not like the way iwm is performing in this market let's take a look at the vix the vix settling in here right around that level of support that we talked about yesterday there's that support and resistance area here and that's a fairly significant place so far i still think we're in pretty good shape and once again unless we break above that little downtrend here in um, the vix and actually probably not even going to be a problem if that occurs what will be a problem is if we break above hold it as support and then show a fear coming into the market so right now not a major concern here um, showing up in the vix for fear but we'll want to watch that closely if we happen to if this news report happens start to start bringing in some of that fear we breach above in this area we'll want to be watching that pretty closely as we head into this weekend too it's it's just difficult to know what what the result of this G20 could mean for the market. And um, I just really want to caution everyone to consider carefully um, the risk that you carry into this weekend because there really will be nothing you can do uh, Monday morning um, depending on how the results come out and the resulting gap or volatility that could be created not that it will be created that could be created and that makes it very very difficult other than just pure speculation to hold positions um, into this weekend so we'll think about that carefully now, T2122, the four-week new high, new low ratio, is not providing as much help um, either. As you can see, um, we still have plenty of room. We did get a little bit of a rally in this yesterday. We still have plenty of room for both downside moves and upside moves before we reach these re reversal points. There's no directional indication here on T2122 until we reach these areas. And so far, we have sufficient m movement that we could go either direction here in T2122. So kind of keep that in mind. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar has several key reports that could really move the market around this morning. We have a GDP number here at 8.30 this morning. Definitely has the potential of moving the market. So we want to watch that closely. Also jobless claims at 8.30 uh, this morning. That'll be a potential market mover. So we'll want to pay attention to that. We follow that up at 10 a.m. with pending home sales and natural gas report. Now these can move the market. Um, I would say the most likely to move the market of those two would be the pending home sales index. Um, EIA petroleum per, uh, gas report, not likely to move the market much at all. So keep an eye on those things this morning. Those could definitely move us around. And then later on today, we do have that Fed balance sheet at 430, but I wouldn't expect that to provide any market movement at all um, in the market. So pay attention to that. Let's take a look on the earnings calendar. We have quite a few companies reporting earnings um, today on the calendar. 
Um, I think, let's see, um, nearly 40 companies were reporting today. Companies um, like ConAgra um, will be reporting today. It looks like they have reported and are missing. You can see a substantial gap down here this morning on ConAgra. We also have um, MKC. MKC, um, one of those defensive sector stocks reporting this morning, it looks like gapping lower this morning um, on that news. We will also hear from Nike, and I believe Nike is later on today. Nike will be reporting. So kind of keep those in mind. We have some market moving earnings reports uh, that we'll want to focus on for the day. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day, and I want to wish you great profits. And if this is the first time you've seen these videos, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube, and then when that pop-up comes up, make sure and click that bell icon so you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. Also, if you feel the video is worthy, please click those thumbs up buttons and leave a brief comment. You know, you guys... Um, I just can't thank you enough for all your support of this channel and the growth that we've seen is directly related to you. You guys clicking those thumbs up, leaving those comments. Thank you so much. Honestly and truly, you humble me every day with those kind words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, please feel free to share this video with any friends and family. Um, share it on Facebook or Twitter. Um, that's perfectly acceptable. So with that, everyone, let's take a look at some stocks that I think are continuing to set up for potential trades. Some of these stocks you've already seen, some of them might be new uh, that you haven't seen me talk about here recently, but we'll want to keep an eye on them. Um, Microsoft pulling back toward this level of support. You can see Microsoft just kind of pulling back here. We had kind of a rough day here, but yesterday was pretty much a, an indecisive day. Now, technology, of course, could have some trouble around this G20 meeting, but I'm keeping an eye on Microsoft, and one of the reasons I am is because of this long-term trend. You know, um, Microsoft has just been trending up. That's all there is to it. We've had these nasty little pullback areas and things like that, nasty little um, areas when the market is showing turmoil. But other than that, Microsoft has shown um, tremendous strength. Institutional support is what this is. Uh, those big institutions not turning loose of Microsoft, they um, they are supporting this stock. So as this rest pulls back, maybe moves back toward this um, support area or even over toward its overall trend, then we might find that opportunity to enter into Microsoft. Watch that one closely. Looking pretty good overall um, in that chart. Take a look at charts um, like UNH. UNH. Um, this this was a chart that looked like it could set up for a long position. And you can see I was watching this area right here, um, that possibility of breaking above. Now, yesterday's move down could potentially set up that failure in this chart. So as this moves lower, we want to watch for that bounce back up. That lower high failure in here could set a short trade to the downside. So we need to have a little bit of both sides particularly considering the um, the volatility that we could face next week out of this G20 meeting. So um, showing you some possibilities of some long trades, maybe even some short trades setting up. But one of the things for sure, once a stock breaks its trend and breaks through a level of support, the only way this can come back into uh, good graces for me is it would have to recover its support and hold it and show buyers stepping in. Until that time, this trade right now is um, on the watch list for a potential short, and we'll have to pay attention to that. Um, lots of those kind of stocks out there where we're starting to see some of those a uh, little bit of failures coming into play. However, M McDonald's is not one of those. McDonald's um, holding up really, really well here, holding up in this nice tight consolidation in this trend. Did have a little bit of a pullback yesterday, and I cannot say whether this is going to pop higher or break down, but right now McDonald's setting up for a pretty good upside trade, mostly because of this trend uh, continuation pattern 
and this nice little tight consolidation that could be setting up. Now, I can't tell you as I've got my trend line drawn here, I cannot tell you where this trend line is until we actually see that bullish move that sets that higher low in this chart and confirms the trend. Can I establish the the uh, the trend for this chart so we'll want to think about that I don't know where it is the line that I've placed on here is just a reminder that um, it could come at any time so watch for that carefully in that chart I have been watching target and I'm still going to keep an eye on target here for a potential trade um, this pullback has been relatively controlled but I'm beginning to feel um, that it's going to lose this battle here um, between the bulls and the bears holding on uh, by the uh, by its fingernails here on this on this little ledge so breaking up through here holding in this area we need to see those bulls step up here relatively soon if this is going to hold on otherwise target could end up being a failure here at that new high take a look at ttwo TTWO, even though it pulled back, I think we're still okay here on TTWO. What happened here is we, we broke through a major level of resistance in this chart and popped on up. Now we're pulling back for another test, but as long as we're successful in holding in this area, we could have a good setup. So keep that TTWO on a list, watching that chart um, could still um, provide some opportunities. Um, waste management, waste management had taken off here, breaking through, moving out, and all of this back and forth in the market is creating all of this really difficult price action to trade. So we're getting lots of back and forth, and you're probably experiencing this in your own account. We get beautiful entry signals, and because of the, the um, uncertainty of this market, we're getting lots of back and forth. We're not getting a whole lot of good price movement forward so watch that closely but if we can hold here in waste management hold this level of support we still have an opportunity but starting to look a little bit sketchy here at the moment just watch that closely and be very careful so with that everyone i want to i want to wish you all a fantastic day and i want to wish you great profits please 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 consider carefully my words in um the risk of heading into this weekend. There's just no way to know what's going to happen. And um, remember, one of our primary jobs as a trader um, is to protect our capital. So consider that um, as we move toward this weekend. Everyone take care. Have an awesome, awesome day. I wish you all the best. We'll talk to you all bright and early Friday morning. Have a good one.